he didn't he didn't say who he was i just i just had this overwhelming feeling that this was jesus Perfect, perfect, beautiful. John, you have one of the most exceptional, exceptional, amazing indie stories I've ever heard. I mean, when it's, you listen crazy, to it, it, well, I mean, I've, I've researched them. I, I consider myself an NDE researcher at this point. So I, I've, I've heard or read over thousands of NDEs. No, at no this kidding. Point. Wow. <laughs> thousands so i'm now at the point where i'm trying to analyze them and you know help others analyze them but yours sure. is special and amazing because like you said it is just and i mean and you're so lucky like i i i get to hear you tell it but you probably are reliving it like you said it's like it's fresh yeah <laughs> you know what's crazy um, what, too is is um is as often as i tell my story i i never i can never i don't have the language to explain how much more beautiful and wonderful it is. Mm. People tell me, how can it be like, how can it be that, that wonderful? And I, I tell them it's better than I can explain it. I, I can't even, I just don't have the words to explain what it's really like and what, yeah. what awaits all of us when we pass. Now did it, um, I'm going to have to jump straight into questions because I've been trying, so I don't end up editing for three days. I've been trying to keep this sure. part up for like an hour. So we'll see. Okay. But, um, uh, but I, I also have, I mean, I don't want to scare you, but I have 40 something questions here that I was just writing as you were talking. That's okay. That's okay. I, sure. I, I, I'm just letting you know, I have some experience. Like I've had people almost pass out from my questions. So like at some <laughs> point, if you want to tap out and you're like, look, I have a life, I have things to do enough. <laughs> just do That's it. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. We'll try to get through. We'll try to get through all of them. Yes. And then some of them are just notes, like things that I thought were awesome. So I'll just like mention it. But um, okay. So the first thing is that the first thing I just love, I'm getting goosebumps right now, but the first thing that I love is that you walk us through, um, walk us through the whole process that most people have with the tunnel and the light and et cetera, et cetera. And what I have noticed with a lot of these experiences, like you said, is that once they get to the light, either there's somebody standing there, whether it be Jesus or somebody, a deceased loved one, they're like, nope, time to go back home. You can't, I mean, you can't come here. Not yet. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but for those that have gone through the light, like I've had, I've heard a few who have gone through the actual light, a lot of them go straight into that field. And so this is why I wanted to talk about this because oh. I, I, yes, a lot of them go straight into the field. So you're one of the first, if it's not straight into the field, then like you, I have heard a few that have these exceptional, very similar experiences where you're in this, this space. And actually you can tell me, like, I'm gonna ask this question right now since we're here. What do you think this space was? Do you think it was another dimension? Do you think it was a planet? Because you didn't mention that it was big enough to be a, you know, a planet in certain parts. What do you think it was? That's a great question. Um, I, I think it's on the other side. It's where I, I don't think everybody has to go through the tunnel experience or the light if they know what to expect. I think the tunnel and the white light is, is what's used to help people remember where they're supposed to go when they finish a life. But I think like, like when you, when you pass or people in your audience, when their time comes and they pass, mm -hmm. I think they know what to expect. And I, mm -hmm. I don't think they have to go through the tunnel and the white light. I think they just end up on the other side. And I, I think in the field where I was, they just wanted me to see that nature is also part of the other side. As mm -hmm. beautiful as it can be on earth, it's so much more beautiful on the other side. And I, I think that's where people go just to experience the beauty of it. And I, I think a lot of people who, who, who know, who knows what happens, they don't have to necessarily go through the light. They can just bypass it and end up in that field. And I don't, I don't know if it's a different dimension. I can't even explain the, everything that I saw that in terms of what we know about physics here on earth, I, I can't explain how, these buildings exist there because mm -hmm. they're solid. When I, when I opened up that scroll on that table, that was a solid table. You, mm. you couldn't put your hand through it. It was solid, just like what we think is solid here. And I don't, I just can't understand the physics of how it works over there. Yeah. And so like some of these questions are kind of connected to this. So like there are people who do astral traveling and they say that the other side is more real than here. Like, did you have that feeling of you like, Oh, That's, this is reality. I was sleeping. Yep. <laughs> yep. I had, I had the, the awakening that 
this is where we're from. Mm. This is the place that God created for all of us that you can call heaven, the afterlife. They call wow. it the other side. They, I, I don't know why they do that, but they, they call it the other side, but that's home. And I, and when I came back and I woke up in that operating room, I did not want to be there. Every ounce of my being wanted to be back where I was again. I did not want to come back here. In fact, um, when I realized what had actually happened, I went through probably a, a two month, really dark depression. Mm. Cause I, I thought I got to commit suicide. I, I cannot oh. live here the rest of my life knowing what it's like on the other side. And then I realized that the other side told me that you're supposed to tell people there is no death. So it, it took me a good two months before I could get myself together to think, all right, John, you're here. You can't go back until your time is up. Just tell people what you know and let mm -hmm. and give people that knowing that there is so much more than what they think is out there. And I've been yeah. trying to share my story ever since. Yeah. And um, I want to quickly just say that to, to everybody listening, John is one of the amazing ones that you know you're doing this for all the right reasons. Like I've contacted some indie ears and they're just like, when they see how many followers I have or don't have, they're like, uh, maybe I'll wait, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but you're, yeah, you're yeah, just like, true. yes. You're like, sure. <laughs> You know? it's, it's, yeah, it's it's the message. That's what has to get out is the message. That's what's important. That's what's critical. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then for others, like say somebody just happens to watch this video and they don't know about this experience, a lot of indie ears become depressed after because for just the yeah. same reason. They realize this is like, I don't want to say it's hell, but this is not as nice as where I just came from. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not yep. even remotely. I think that's one of the reasons why when we come here, we don't remember a lot of times where we're from. And it's like, I, I tell people that, have you ever felt that, that aching in your solar plexus that you know that there's something missing? There's something missing. And when I was on the other side, I found out what it was that we're missing. And what it is, it's the feeling of God. On the other side, you can feel God. You can feel how much that being loves and cherishes every single one of us. It's like your own kids. It's, it's that love is extraordinary. And on earth, what makes it so hard is that when you're here on this planet, it feels like you're in a battle and you're in a foxhole and you're cut off. You don't have a radio and you feel cut off. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, you don't feel that. You feel God. And it's just the most extraordinary feeling that I have ever had. And that I think that's what we miss. We, we have that that sense of there's something more. We don't know what it is, but there's something more. And we're, all, we're always trying to find what it is. And I think mm. it's God. Yeah, I totally agree. I kind of feel like when people talk about when they feel the love of God, you know, and they talk about the unconditional love and they're just using yeah. human, human words, but they're like, there's no way that you can really explain how this feels. It's almost exactly. addictive. It sounds like a drug. It sounds like it's just overwhelming to some, to some people. It actually well, becomes overwhelming. Yep. So it's like, just imagine like you're a kid who's really attached to the parent and you're sent away to, to, to camp. <laughs> you keep trying to find a yeah. way to get back home. Exactly. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> I think that's why we have to forget because God's like, they're going to keep coming back. <laughs> if, I <don't, laughs> yeah, if I don't put that good. veil over them, they're going to yeah. keep coming. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, all right. So the other question I had um, is, well, I wanted to mention, okay, let me ask this question first. So you, you said that you had names for each one of the buildings and you, there's some things that you said they call it the other side or they call it the orientation center. Mm -hmm. were, were these things that Alan was telling you during your pro the process or were these things knowing yep. that came to you? He was telling me the I'm whole, the whole, um, the whole experience was he was talking in my left ear and he was telling me what I was seeing, what this building was for, what people go here for, what they do. And I was able to, I've been able to remember everything he told me mm. and, and I, I don't remember, remember him telling me what a lot of the buildings were called. I don't, I don't know what the other side calls them, except I, he said this orientation, it's called orientation. And some people have told me that the building that he took me to the, the gigantic library, he mm. said what a lot of people have, have think that has been is what they call the Akishic records. I didn't, I, I didn't hear him tell me that. So I don't know if that's what it's called or not, but if the Akishic records is a huge library, then that's what I saw. 
Yes. And um, I'm looking for, because that was a question that I had. So I want to make sure I, okay. Sure. So um, the, the thing about when you describe the Akashic Records, it sounds exactly like a handful, if not more, people's exact description of how this building looks. Oh, I mean, really? that is, it is shocking to me. Like, this is a real place. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. Um, there might there might be some differences. And this is a, probably another question. And, you know, I, I'll just get to them. I'll just can't check them off when we get to them. But another question that I had is when you see the scrolls, I've heard other people who, yes, they see the same building, very sa the same out, out you know, uh, floor plan. But um, they instead of seeing scrolls, they might see books. And there's others who instead of seeing books, they might see these like lights, like almost like um, iPads. I've heard of iPads, well, the weirdest thing. So, oh, yeah. Do you think it's something that's just based on the person's comfort, like what they might see? I don't know. I um, I have heard that before, and I don't know. And I was just on, uh, I was just on a show on a podcast the other day, and it was out of Vietnam, and this woman had heard my story, and I, I went on her show, and she asked me, "Do you think people who are Buddhists will see the Buddha?" when they die mm. or does everybody see Jesus? And I told her, you know, I, I said, I don't know, but I, I do know that the other side doesn't have religion. There's a, there's just a, a spirituality. Like you're not going to see, Oh, here, this person's a Catholic. This person yeah. is a Hindu. <laughs> this person is a Buddha. That, that doesn't happen over there yeah. because in, in religion was invented by humanity. God didn't invent religion. And what's so ironic, too, is that when I was in that field, standing across from Jesus, mm -hmm. I got the feeling from him of absolutely no judgment. There's no wow. judgment of anybody. And I got the feeling that there's, there's no one religion that you're supposed to follow. The other, any religion that brings you closer to God is the one that you should be following. That's what the other side cares about, because it doesn't matter if you're a Catholic or a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim. They don't they don't care about any of that. They yeah. just care that you're trying to find God. Yes. Um, and, and while we're on the, the subject of Jesus, I've, I've had like probably the last four or five interviews have been people who have had experiences and journeys and adventures with Jesus. So he's everywhere. This guy is busy. Um, <laughs> But um, I guess my, my first question is, do you see Jesus and God as the same or are they, they two separate entities? Um, that, and that is a, that's a great question. Okay. Here's what I can, here's what I felt. I felt that Jesus was a soul, just like all of us. And I, I didn't get the sense that they were the same. I got, a, I got the sense that there was a being that we call God who created all of us. All of us are children of God. I didn't get the feeling that Jesus was God. And I, I know that here on earth, a lot of Christians believe that Jesus was God. I just I just didn't get that feeling when I was on the other side. I, I got the feeling that they're, they're separate. They're two distinct types of entities or beings. And that we're all, all of us are sons and daughters of God. Yes. I totally personally resonate with that. Um, and I, I love, again, this is why John is so awesome, is because <laughs> your it sounds like your previous uh, beliefs with c Catholicism, like there's some people who start to like alter their NDE experience based on what they choose to believe here. And I'm just oh, like, I, I like, I like people to just tell the truth. Like, if such of you really are here to spread the word, tell us what really happened. Like, what did you yeah. really experience? Please, you know? I, so, I, 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 think, I think of myself as, I'm 50% Christian because I, I believe in what Jesus came here to do. I believe in his teachings about mm -hmm. loving each other, non-judgment, accepting people. And, and that's how he lived his life. And that's how I want to live my life. But I just don't believe, I don't believe in all the dogma of the church. Mm -hmm. I believe in Jesus, just not the dogma. Yes. And that's yeah. why I think of myself as only kind of 50% Christian. Yes. 
Um, and then the last question um, on that on that subject, because again, I've come across a lot of people who have had these Jesus experiences and some I do feel like, okay, this feels like Yeshua, this feels like Jesus. And some I'm just like, what is happening here? Um, yeah. So a lot of times these beings do not say who they are. They don't say, hey, I'm Jesus. How are you? You know, hi, John. You know, um, yeah. the person generally kind of just assumes and he, uh, you know, and I've heard the, the white robe and golden sash. Oh, really? Okay. I, I am not Christian, so I don't know. Is the golden sash a Christian thing, or is it just that this is weirdly something that a lot of people experience on the other side? He's I just got the, same the impression. Thing. I just got the impression that that was like a belt that kept his robe together. Wow. That had, it, had, it had no other significance than just a belt. What? I mean, this is that yeah. is big. That is big. I've heard this golden yeah. sash so many times on Jesus. <laughs> like, what is going on? It, it might mean something, but I, I didn't. I just got the impression that everybody over there who wears a robe or a kind of a, a robe-like tunic sort of thing, that mm -hmm. they have a stash that keeps it together. That's. I that's am looking into I this. I am doing yeah. some research because it's like, what, why is it just it's, the white robe makes sense? You see him in that here depicted all the time, but it might be like yeah. a rope. Because back in the day, they had the rope uh, sash, I think, right? Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't gold, so I don't know what's going on here. But um, you should research. That would, yeah, that would be a great topic <laughs> to research. So um, and then he was a li like a light being. Um, so you didn't really see distinct features. But had this being come to you in the field and looked like had green hair and um, you know, I don't know, pink skin or something like that, was it just the feeling? Like, did you get like a knowing or a sense? Like, it was like a vibrational sense. Like, this is Jesus. Was it just a knowing as opposed was, to any kind a, of yeah, he didn't. He didn't say who he was. I just, I just had this overwhelming feeling that this was Jesus. Wow. This was, and and I think because of what he told me, you must tell them there is no death. I think if somebody else told me that, I don't think I would have taken it as seriously. <laughs> but having it come from Jesus, and I believed it. And it wasn't what was so weird, Haji, about it is that. He didn't say, you know what, John, when you have some time, whenever you get a free moment, would you mind sharing this with people that at work or friends? Would you mind doing that? It wasn't like that. He said, you must tell them there is no death. It, it was like, it was like an order. Mm. And I, so I've, I've just taken it very seriously, but I, I don't think if it, if it didn't come from him, I don't mm. know if I would have really ever thought much about that. But it was okay. how he said it that has made yeah. me want to share the story. Like a mission. You have a mission. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and that, that ties into another question. And hopefully I'm not losing it. I'm about to lose it. Oh, God, come back, come back. <laughs> um, the next question is, so some people, cause, I mean, I, like other people, have either passed out or have had surgeries and had been under, been under anesthesia, et cetera. Why do you think that you were given this am amazing tour? Like, why was it not just blackness as opposed to this whole experience? Like, do you feel like it was done in, so that you could share it? Like the whole purpose of the tour was so that you could experience this and now tell everybody. Like, you know, um, I have thought about that so many times because I'm nobody. I, I don't have a podcast. I don't have a radio show. I'm not like you. I'm not Oprah. I don't have, I'm nobody have, too. Look, we're all nobody. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't know why they, why they shared it with me. I, I've, I've never been able to figure that out. Maybe it's because they knew that I would take it seriously and I would try to share it as, as much as I could. Well, but yeah. I, I never, I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why it was me. They must have known that I was never going to have, a, maybe I will have a podcast. I, I don't, maybe someday I will. I don't, I don't know, mm -hmm. but. They must have known that beforehand, because yeah. why would they have given it to Oprah or, or or somebody who could tell the world that this is what happens, that nobody really dies? So I've always wondered that. Hmm. You're right. I, I never even thought about that. Like, interesting, interesting. Because like, can you imagine if like most of the celebrities or people who were like public figures were having these experiences? <laughs> like, we'd also change, probably think, what's going on? What's going on? It would on? change the world. <laughs> yeah, it would absolutely change the world. But um, I, I would say, like I said, you are, you just already, I know that you are the anomaly where it's like, you're not changing the story. You seem very, it's just, I'm just sharing. I want to get this word out there. 
and you seem like somebody who is like earnest to some extent, you know, like, so I, I could see the, the personality characteristics that they would say, oh, this guy, he could do it, you know? Um, oh, but nice yeah, <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I just wonder sometimes what, um, okay, so, so a tie to that question is at that point in your life, like, did it change besides the depression of wanting to come back, et cetera, did it change you like drastically? Oh yeah. Uh, the biggest, the biggest thing that changed about me was, was the religion. I no longer believed that there was only one religion. It was more like whatever religion helps you the most to get connected to God. That's what, that's what you should follow. And the other thing that I learned, it was probably one of the most important things I think that the other side wants me to convey is that our world is almost backwards. This earth is almost backwards in, mm -hmm. in terms of what is really important. So many people that I have met in my life have felt like failures because they never made a million dollars. They didn't live in the 20,000 square foot house. They didn't drive the most expensive car because none of that stuff matters. Mm -hmm. The other side doesn't care about that. What mm -hmm. the other side cares about is two things I think are the most critical. The number one, the number one is why you're here. Everybody came here for a reason. Everyone's here to learn, to grow and to develop and become more. That's the first reason. And the second reason we're here is to help others. One of the things that I absolutely love is a quote from the Dalai Lama. And it's something that I have tried to follow with my life. And he said, our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. And that's what the other side cares about. Can you imagine someone who's a billionaire when their lifetime is finished and that person goes to the other side? Can you imagine anybody, if, can you imagine God saying, well, what did you, how did you live your life? What did you do? And the person says, oh, I made a billion dollars. Do you think God's going to care about that? What God's going to care about is what did you do to help my children? Did you help them with your money? Did you make a difference? Did you try to donate to charities? Did you try to help less fortunate people? Did you try to do something that would make a difference? And I, I think a lot of people feel like they're failures if they haven't achieved per, you know, financial success, but it doesn't matter. That, that I think is one of the core messages that I want to tell people is that that I know that that seems like that's important when you're here on earth, but mm. it's not, that's not important. It's great if you want to help people by sharing and, and do donating to charities, but it doesn't, your life shouldn't just be about accumulation because it doesn't matter. What matters is who you help. Yes. There's a great quote that I love from Michelle Obama. And she mm -hmm. said, success isn't about how much money you make. It's about the difference you make in people's lives. I thought, mm -hmm. she's got it. That's exactly it. <laughs> you, you got it. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. And I, I've heard this. I think I was listening to an indie yesterday, and the same idea came during the life review. And it came very clear to that person that, it, like, like you said, I hear it a lot where it says, it's the little things that you forget about that they, they show you. Yeah. And you're just like, I don't even recall that. Was that me? You know? Exactly. You're like, that was no big deal. <laughs> and, and they love that because it's like, and, it, and it's, a different, it's a differentiation between those things that you do. And again, you forgot about it because you're just thinking, okay, let me help this person and move on, you know, as yeah. opposed to the things where you're like, I went to this charity event and I gave this, you know, you can give like a million dollars for the wrong reason. And then Absolutely. you can give up 25 cents for the right reasons. And that 25 cents is going to do more for you on the other exactly. side. Exactly. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's just amazing. Um, okay. Uh, let me see what other questions I had here. Sure. Uh, okay. So then, so, so a lot of these, okay, some of these are kind of very, not to say technical, but very detailed. So when you said that Alan was speaking to you in your left ear, was he the entire time? Was it only in the left ear? Yeah. Just the left. It was like, it was like he was glued to my side and he was telling yeah. me, he was kind of just giving me the information, everything I was seeing, where I was, what this building was about, what people do here. He was, it was like he was mm. just telling me as we were going. This, the, whole, the whole experience was him telling me. And wow. I, I, I think that was something 
it was important because I didn't forget then. As he told yeah. me, I didn't forget any of the things he showed me or, or told me. Yeah. And I, I think there's some um, symbolism or, or importance in that being the left ear. Like I, I just recall when you say that, I think of um, my my conversation with Steve Nowak and he had mentioned that on the left side is where like um, if there is, it's just a spiritual side. Like he had mentioned that you would hear stuff in your left side and you should yeah. pay attention to it. So that's really um, interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. So I, it, I don't know enough to talk about that any longer, but I'm going to definitely look into it now that I've heard two different people talking about the left side and the left ear. Yeah, that's, um, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, now, did you ever see Alan physically? No, you know, I okay. never, it was just like the guy in the planetarium. I never, I never turned around to look at anybody. I don't, I wish I did, but I, I didn't. I was just going through the, I was, I think I was so amazed by what I was actually experiencing that I, I never thought to look and see what it looked like. It, but I, I, I wouldn't be concerned it. about that because like I've heard where people have tried to look and they can't like there's sometimes where they just for some reason they cannot show themselves to you. I've, I've heard this a lot of times. And oh. so there have been people who thought, hey, wait a minute. And they can't like every time they go here, they person moves. They move. <laughs> oh, int yeah. Interesting. Maybe maybe that would have happened. <laughs> Yeah, so don't worry about it. Um, okay, so this, all right. Well, okay, so now the other thing that you said, and I always think about this, is that you say everything that you like to do here on earth, you can do in heaven. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like that whole idea, you know, um, so, so is below. So, um, wait. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so is below, so is above. Oh, as, as above, so below. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I personally, most of my ho hobbies are pretty much PG-13. So I, I could see me doing the hiking and the this and the that, the kayaking. Yeah. I would have a ball, you know? Yeah. But then, you know, we, we say there's no judgment, but there's people who are very dark in on this planet. Yes. You know, it, it is what it yes. is. So there are people who have hobbies that are just really just should not probably be in heaven. So I just wonder, like, how does that work? <laughs> this is how I, I don't have all the details, but I, I can tell you what I know. The other side is made up of levels, levels of, I guess, you, I guess you could call them levels of spirituality. There are really high levels, but there are also lower levels. And I think this is where a lot of people who've had NDE experiences say that they've experienced hell. The lower, the lower levels are also on the other side because God, God never created a hell. There is no biblical hell like we're taught about growing up. It doesn't exist. And God certainly does not ever, ever toss away souls into a fiery lake um, for eternity. That That's just mythology of Christian mythology. But the lower levels do exist. And the people that the souls who have not developed, who have not taken on very many lifetimes, for whatever reason, that's where they like to go into the lower mm. levels. But yeah. God, God doesn't tell someone where they have to go. It's almost like you will feel what level you want to be on because of mm. your level of development. So that's mm. all I really know. I, I just know that there are, there are different levels and they're based on how much a soul has developed or mm. not. But the most important thing, the most important thing was that there is no, there's no biblical hell that God tosses his creations into for eternity. Yeah. And I've heard this. I mean, what you're saying makes perfect sense when it comes to like, you know, there's people who say that you, you know, you go where you vibe at. Like if you're on a yeah. high vibration, um, then you're going to go into the higher realms. And if you're not, then, you know, and it makes, that's like fear. Like that, when people talk about an all loving and non-judgmental God, it would make sense that this would be the same as well. Cause it's like, you can't, <laughs> Yeah. on one hand, you can't, you can say, okay, on one hand, you can't have the people who like to, you know, beat up other people for fun. Like literally, mm -hmm. I promise you there's somebody out there like that, you know? Oh, yeah, <laughs> so you can't have that person walking around near the castle when you're trying to sit there and learn about, you know, so it, it just makes sense that this is how it would kind of work itself out. And, still and, that's, be fair for that's, um, and, and that's the whole purpose of the life review is the people that did intentionally hurt somebody, they have to feel what their actions made that person feel. And that's that's what makes people learn, is yeah. when they feel what their actions did to somebody else. And that yeah. elevates them. Once they learn from that, then that elevates them. And they can go yeah. on to pursue 
their levels of development, their spirituality. Just like you said, people, where people vibe at. I never heard that before, but that's true. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then what type of body did you have while you were in the orientation center? Because like, I'm, for, for me, I'm used to people talking about being in an astral body. Like that's for OBEs and for some NDEs. But then you have people, like you said, there's levels to all this. There's levels to everything, yeah. right? That's how it kind of God works, I guess. So there's levels where you get into the ethereal realms and you're just you're just an orb or a thought or a, a point of consciousness. Like it really gets very kind of abstract, I guess, from what I've what I've learned. So huh. and from your point of view, from your experience, where do those well for the first question is what type of body did you have? Like did you look down at any point? You know what? When when I was there, I never actually I never looked down and, and to see what I looked like. I just looked at all the people that I saw and everybody, they look just like we do. And people wear different kind of clothing. A lot of people like to wear tunics or gowns. And, mm. But there are all kinds of people that like to wear t-shirts and jeans. It's mm. totally up to the individual person. But everybody, everybody has bodies. And the only way that I can describe it is like they're made of energy, but they mm. are, it's so, the energy is so concentrated that they're solid, just like, just mm. like we are solid. Those mm. bodies are solid. They're real, but they're better. It's almost mm. like the bodies on earth are shadows or poor replicas of what the bodies are on the other side. Mm. You have the body that God created you with on the other side. And mm. you also what's so interesting about it is you don't have to appear in any particular form if you don't want to, but most people will look like just like they were when God created us. Mm -hmm. All of us are different. All of us were created differently. And on the other side, just like that man who I saw come through the orientation center and he began to change into his self, mm -hmm. that's how he wanted to appear on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that's how everybody that I saw, all those counselors in the orientation center, they appeared just like they want to appear like you as, mm. as Haji. You might decide to look like you do now on the other side, mm. or you may not. You may decide to look like how God created you, but it's totally up to the individual soul. And I, I, oh. didn't, see, I didn't see any balls of energy. I didn't mm -hmm. see... I didn't see any angels. I, I totally believe in angels. I think they're real. But everybody that I saw, they look just like we do. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I always wonder like, okay, were angels part of it? Because that's like the one thing that's missing because I, I love to hear angel stories, but everything else I, is so amazing. It's fine, <laughs> like it's okay. Yeah. yeah, I do too. I always think about that too. <laughs> um, okay, so I like what you said because this is actually news to me. Like you're saying the way that God created us because like, I take my my information from like other people's NDEs and also like what I've read in certain books, like especially Michael Newton's, you know, um, I, I forget him. Yeah. Yeah. Journey of Souls and stuff like that. So he talks about a lot of this. A lot of what you're saying is, is connected to what he uh, gets from his hypnotherapy uh, sessions. Um, but uh, they mentioned that you kind of take the life that you felt maybe you had the most you felt the most comfortable with or that comfortable with that body or is the body that you prefer and you can kind of use that avatar up there you know and i yeah, guess if, I you come that too. if you come across somebody who remembers you from another lifetime and another you know you can kind of switch and so that they can say okay this was me like oh hi it's you you know i i've um, heard that too yep but i've never heard like you're saying there is an actual body that god created for us initially yeah that's yep. amazing that is yep. awesome <laughs> <laughs> That's how, yeah, every one of us, every one of us is unique and he created wow. every single one of us as he wanted to. So all of us are unique individuals and, and people have always asked me, they said, well, when we cross over, are we still us? I'm like, absolutely. But not only are you you, but you have access to all of your memories from mm -hmm. all of your different lifetimes. Everything that you are totality is on the other side. But when you're here in an earth body, you only tend to remember your current lifetime. So yeah. on the other side, you are so much more than you are here, but you're still absolutely you. Wow. The super version. Yeah. Super hot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, okay. And then you, you mentioned a part 
there's a couple of things that, like I said, I, like I researched this. So, so there's a couple of things that I have on my shelf. Like I have a shelf in my head where I put things that aren't, yeah. haven't been explained. And one of the things that have not been explained is this stadium. Like there's a stadium that a lot of people come across with people applauding and you mention it. And I'm like, okay, this might be the same place. So you're saying there's like the re the reunion area. Was the reunion area the metal or was it like, where were they applauding the soul? If they were, it was like, it was it was the, it was right off on the right hand side of the orientation center, and I, I don't know if I, I didn't see a stadium there. It just looked oh, like oh no stadium okay <laughs> yeah it, it just looked like a a huge garden oh that, that, okay that, that I just I just call the gardens because there were just plants and flowers and trees and it was absolutely beautiful. It was it, it was like that was just a, a huge garden where everybody yeah. goes once they have their orientation. And that's where everybody knows, oh, something else I wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. and people have asked me this. They, they said, how does anybody know who's coming through these tunnels? Mm -hmm. Because when I was watching all of this, there were no computers on anybody's table. There were no papers or no, mm -hmm. how, and I, I don't understand how they know when someone's coming through there. So mm -hmm. how do they know when someone's going to die? So that, that's something I don't know. It, it was so interesting because I, I have no idea how they know that. And, and, and that's the weird thing about uh, some of these experiences. It's like on one hand, you'll see somebody looking at a, a show or history on a flat screen TV, you know, decades before it, it even is invented for us. And yeah. then on the other hand, you have the, what we would consider, like, I, I know for me as a child thinking about heaven, you would kind of think that everything is just like omnipotent and just known and, you know, like magic, you know? So then the yeah. whole idea of them just knowing who's coming would make perfect sense to me. So it's like this big balance or mix of these yeah. things that, yeah, it's just very weird. So weird. It is weird. Um, it's, <laughs> well, I, I can't even, sometimes I think about it and I can't, I can't even comprehend yeah. what it's like. And and then the idea, like I have so many questions in my head right now, I'm like about to explode. So like, <laughs> so the reunion area, let me just quickly just say this, is um, very similar to what people, when I said they go straight to the light instead of going to this orientation, uh, or at least yeah. remembering, but they, they could do it and not, not remember it. That's possible too, right? Yeah, but yep. um, when they go straight to the light and they are re reunited with uh, family members and friends, it sounds very similar to this reunion area. Like that sounds yes, like, I, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, let's see, this is where does that mean? Okay, so another question that I had. Um, how does, and I mean, like, I ask questions that sometimes I know you might not have an answer for, but I'm just asking it so it could be asked. Okay. Sure. So um, when people are applauding those who enter the reunion area, that's always been kind of weird to me because it's like most people say, and I don't know if you confirm on this as well, that time doesn't exist the way it does here, like right? time is different here and there, right? Yes. Um, and then so for some people, they say that we live all these lives simultaneously, like all of our past lives are really just simultaneous lives and they're done like in a split second, like for, in earth terms, right? So if that's the case, like imagine like, you know, you and I are talking on the other side and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go live a couple of earth lives or, or yeah. not even earth lives, lives period, all over the place. Yeah. And you might be going, you know, it just makes me, it's very confusing to me because it's like, if you're not really gone that long, then I don't know, like, why, why what are we celebrating? But like you said, I guess maybe it's not about the time aspect because we would know what that means. It's just the fact that you went to, you know, this boot camp, <laughs> hell planet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, That's what it's like. Mad Max, Mad Max, and you survived. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what, I, here's what I can tell you. I, I don't know about any of the, live simultaneously because mm -hmm. my guy didn't tell me anything about that but mm -hmm. i i do know this when you're on the other side and you want to plan a lifetime a lot of people will take on very difficult challenges and hardships because from the perspective of people on the other side a lifetime is only two or three months because mm -hmm. they don't they don't mm -hmm. have linear time like we do but on the other side, when you're on, when you're on Earth, it's a long time if you're here for 70, 80, or 90 years. And my guide told me that the grief period is different for people on the other side. Because when you pass and you go back home again, you still have all those people here on Earth that you're going to miss. But it's different for them. 
because their time horizon is only two or three months. Mm. Grief is different for us when we're here because we might not have that person for 20 or 30 years until we finish our lifetime. Mm. So that's, that's what I know about the idea of time as that's, that's how it was, was explained to me. Mm. Wow. And then, um, and then some of these are just notes here. So like I, like I said, I like that you kind of mentioned that earth is difficult. I've heard this several times and I didn't even need to hear it because I know it. I've lived it. It is. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's why I, I, I can't, either can't remember an NDE or I don't have them because like I would, if I had your experience, they would have to pull me, like literally drag me from heaven. Oh they my would, gosh. They would have Absolutely. To. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not going back. I'm not going back. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, funny. And then, uh, okay, so let's see. Oh, okay, the Temple of Artemis. Like this was such an amazing, um, uh, you said that the orientation center looks like the Temple of Artemis yeah, that's yes. in Turkey. And yep. so this is something that comes up a lot as well. So people who experience this world or this other side, like you do, and it's very similar, they say that a lot of the buildings are Romanesque, you know, like Greek-like, Mediterranean, like, you know, mm -hmm. Why? Why do you think that is? <laughs> I, I, the only thing I can think of is that because they're so beautiful. Mm. That's the only, I, I don't know if it's because of the, they're more functional. I have no idea if there is some architectural reason for that. I, I don't know. Mm. All I know is that they were, when I was there, those buildings were so remarkably gorgeous. Mm. I mean, I, I can't even... If I, if I was a, a Vincent van Gogh or if I was a, a Michelangelo, I don't think mm -hmm. I could paint what these buildings look like. They're mm -hmm. just breathtakingly beautiful. And mm -hmm. the other side doesn't just have, not everything is made of beautiful white marble. It's just the area that, that I was shown because mm -hmm. the other side is like a planet. It's, it's humongous. And there mm -hmm. are all kinds of other places you can go. So but whatever reason, my guy just took me to this particular one area of the other side that has all these beautiful white marble. And I think when you look at like if you ever go to Washington, D.C. and you go look at the Lincoln Memorial or any of those buildings, they're just they're just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Even even um, our Supreme Court building, it's got the mm -hmm. big triangle on top and it's got those columns out front. They're mm -hmm. just it's just absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. And I, I think that's probably the only one of the reasons is because it is so beautiful. Yeah, I've, I've always wondered if maybe it's because of channeling to some extent. It could either be like in oh. my mind, it's two things. I think that maybe the architects channeled it, channeled it the same way a lot of our like Leonardo da Vinci and, you know, like our Michelangelo, like a lot of our major um, inventors and artists tend to channel their greatest works. I feel like maybe the architects did the same and they were channeling heaven, you know. You know what? Um, they what what is what is on earth like all these greek beautiful marble pyramids and gorgeous marble buildings mm. those are all on the other side first mm. so everything that's beautiful was on the other side before it was here on earth and that's exactly what what i think you just said hits the hits the nail on, on the head it's channeled people remember from the other side and i think mm. that's how a lot of these ideas and concepts and um, ideas come through to here to us here on earth is from the other side. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then, um, some of these are just comments. So like, you know, I, I've heard people who have also heard, seen healing centers and been in those. Mm -hmm. And I would just love to experience like, like that would be my go-to. I'd be there just healing all day. <laughs> yeah. But, I know, um, me too. <laughs> and, um, I love the fact that you work, you know, either, I guess, raised Catholic prior to this experience. I love when somebody something different, especially atheists. Like those are the funnest in the ease because yeah. it's like, you. there's no Im imagining any of this. There's none. It would be a whole nother scenario. It would not be this. So that just gives you, it's just like more proof that this happened. This is something spectacular, you know? Yeah, pe um, people have asked me, they've asked me, well, how do you know it wasn't a dream? How do you know you didn't just make this up? And I tell them, I said, not in a million years could I ever dream up what I actually saw. Mm. And I, I love science fiction. I have a great, great imagination, but mm. not in a million years could I ever imagine what I saw. Mm. It was just too extraordinary. 
And then um, I love, okay, so you said you were a monk in your previous life. I, did you have more than one monk life or that was the only one you well, saw? I don't, I don't know. He only showed me three, just those oh, okay, three. Okay. And it, again, it was just to the idea to show me that past lifetimes are real and that to share yeah. with people that this is not the only life. Unless you only want one life, you certainly can because nobody forces us to have a lifetime. It's, it's just up to the individual. Mm -hmm. And something he also explained to me because people have asked me, well, why, why would we have a lifetime? Why would we come here when we can stay on the other side? What's the point? Mm -hmm. well, the whole reason is that on the other side, there is nothing negative. There's no mm -hmm. war. There's no, there's no hatred. There's no violence. There's no prejudice. There's no hunger. There's no homelessness. The other side is perfect. And the, re the, the, the thing that helps us learn the most is when you go through something, if you go through something hard, something challenging, maybe you have some kind of a, of a heartbreak, something, just something horrible that's hard for you. When you get to the other end of that, when you work through it, the beauty is that what you become from having going through that or having gone through it, it's yeah. almost like trying to explain to somebody what it's like to ride a bike. You can tell people as much as you want, but they'll never understand it until they actually do it. And that's one of the reasons why we come here is because we learn through going through hard times. Even if you look at anything in your past that you've been through, you have become a better person for having gone through it. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why we're here. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know this and I, I teach this, but like a big part of me just wants to cry and scream and say, no, why? Oh, I know. <laughs> no. There's right. no way I, I really signed up. I'm really like every day I wake up and say, did I, did I really, really sign up for this? Did I? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I have thought, I have thought the same thing many, many times. Absolutely. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, so, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I like when you said you were a monk because like when I started this life, I wanted to be a monk and I still like really? to this day, I, 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 every day it's like a struggle. It's like, should I try? And the last place I lived, they had two monasteries like surrounding where I lived. And I'm like, I feel like this is a sign. <laughs> really? That's all, that's interesting. <laughs> I know I don't wow. look anything like that, but I, it's always like, I literally as a child wanted to be a monk. Like I told my parents and they clearly knew I was very weird from the beginning. <laughs> that must've been a but past I, life thing. I feel like it might have been several because that to me is my ideal life is to just be silent praying on the top of a mountain somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I like, I, I'm attracted to that kind of a lifestyle too. Yes. Yes. So hopefully, you know, if I have to come back, then maybe it'll be a monk life. We'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the, the cool thing, and this is something I got excited about. So I have a question about it is that you saw the three lies, then you come back and you get hypnotized. Um, did you see the same three lives or at least one of those previous lives no, you saw in heaven? I, they were different. That's what was so interesting is they were different. Mm. And that's when I realized that we can have multiple, multiple lifetimes because we have, we have always been, if you, if you think about creation, was there a beginning or was it, there had to have been a beginning billions mm -hmm. of years ago when God created us. Think about how many lifetimes all of us have really had. It's probably unlimited. That's yeah, when I yeah. that's when I realized that when he took me to that that past life building where you can watch your lifetimes. And then when I had the regression, I was like, oh my gosh. The biggest thing was that I learned that past lifetimes really are real. Because I was yeah. still skeptical. I think I'm probably the most skeptical person I've ever met. I I, I want to see evidence. <laughs> so when I went to that hypnotherapist, it's like, wow, I one of the one of the lifetimes I saw was I, it was in, it was in Egypt, and oh. I was I was desperately poor in that life. I was a sheep herder, oh, wow. and I had absolutely nothing in that life. It was an, it was a, a life of absolute poverty, mm. and I remember it was, it was really hot, just a very warm, <laughs> hot life. Oh my god! No fan, no AC. Yeah, nothing <laughs> like that. Yeah, it was brutal, brutal heat. <laughs> And, um, you know, I, I was just talking to my last guest about reincarnation. Like, I just, I, I want and pray, and I like, I love what you're doing because you're going to open people's minds to this. We all need to believe in reincarnation. We have to. Like, that is what is going to help to open up the golden rule for everybody because you realize, yeah. oh, okay, this could be me in a, another lifetime. And it gets even yep. weirder when you start thinking about 
simultaneous lifetimes. Like as an oversoul, you're living, you could be like friends with yourself, but that's a whole nother yeah. story. But yeah. all those those concepts help us to come together and realize we are one and to stop all the BS, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yep, um, exactly. All right. There's, so, too much, there's definitely too much BS. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I said, okay. Uh, okay, so when you came back, because, okay, when you came back, were you the type of person where if you told this story, everyone's just kind of like, you know, like, were you, were you kind of in that world where this would make sense for some, you know, like, how was it when you came back? Did you tell anybody? If not, why I, didn't you tell anybody? <laughs> yeah, here, here's what happened. I, um, when I came back, when I opened up my eyes in the operating room, and the surgeon was looking right at me, I, I said, what just happened? And I thought he was going to be able to tell me that, oh, you went to a different part of the hospital, or you had, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he, he didn't say it. He said, we lost you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you actually died. And, I, and for me, from my perspective, I felt like I was on the other side for an hour or two. That's what it felt like. But he mm. said I was only, I was dead for seven minutes. So they did all of this in seven minutes. Well, wow. I didn't know, I didn't know what had happened. So I told my mom, my mom's the one that drove me to the hospital and drove me back. I told her what happened because I had no idea. I had I didn't even know what heaven was like because I was, I was raised Catholic. We didn't ever really talk about that. Nobody really knew. Yeah. And there was no terminology back then of NDEs. There was, it just didn't exist yet. Well, my mom had a book by Raymond Moody and it, it was, um, <laughs> it was called life after life. Yeah. And I read that, I read that book in one day wow. and that's when I realized, oh my gosh, I, I saw the other side. I saw, I was there. That's when I realized what had really happened. It was a, it was like a day or two later until I realized what happened. Wow. And I, and I, I, I didn't tell a lot of people right away because it took me, it was a process of trying to get rid of everything I was raised to believe and have all of this new information now that I've got to learn about all of, let this sink in. And, and I've, I've had it now for over 30 years. And it's just, to me, it's like, it's like second nature. And I forget a lot of times what it sounds like when, when people hear it for the first time, because it, it really is, is it, is it that good? Is it that wonderful over there? And it is. And so for mm -hmm. me, it's just, I have to try to remember what it sounds like when someone hears it for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. First of all, God bless Raymond Moody. <laughs> Like yeah, for real, he, he comes up in so many of these stories because he was like the saving grace. Like he's what helped people to know that they were not crazy. You exactly. Because yep. back in the day, this is what they would send them straight to the loony bin. Absolutely. And yeah. What I don't understand, me being who I am, these doctors who clearly, if you if you've been if you've been practicing for at least five plus years, you've had to have had at least one or two patients. And I'm saying like like surgeons, obviously not like a regular yeah. doctor. But you've had to have at least one or two kind of open their eyes after you lost, and then they're just like, "Oh my God, I saw Jesus! I saw God! I saw the, um, the angels!" Well, I'm right? sure, yeah, yeah. So it's like, so the ones who were just like, "What are you talking about? We're we're sending you to the crazy the loony bin!" Like, what were yeah. they doing? Who who are yep. these people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I wonder that too. Yeah. <laughs> And and your mother is awesome. K kudos to her for like yeah. like you said, she clearly was Catholic, and she hears you have this experience. I've heard other stories where they kind of shut them down, like "Don't you dare," you know. Oh yeah, but don't she, ever talk she, about she, this. She got you the book that helps you understand, like, no, this is okay, this is all right, yep. you know. Exactly. Yeah, I would oh. I would have known what to do. I would have not have known anything. Wow! 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 Okay. Um. All right. So the next thing is the um. I got excited about this too, but. I get excited for no reason sometimes, so just bear with me. Sure. <laughs> but, but you were talking about the stadium and the planetarium, and I had a, a guest, uh, NDE guest recently, who's absolutely awesome. She's she's actually the reason why you're here and why I have a few other interview, you know, okay. interviews. Sure. Um, so Angela Comfort. Um, I've heard of her. I've heard of that name before. She's awesome. She's awesome. Like she. Yeah, is I, like, I, talk, I talk to her. Yes. Yeah. So she had an experience where she saw something in the sky and it seemed to her, she said it was kind of like, I think Jesus was showing it to her. And she said, it, it looked like a planetarium, like, it, you know, the, the, oh. the way a planetarium would show you like a, a, a star 
constellation or whatever. Yeah. So it, this just kind of jogged my mind to that again. It's just like, it just seems like some things are very technical, like it's an actual thing. And then other things seem more spiritual on that realm. It's very weird how it kind of- It is, it um, is weird. Okay. And then, um, okay. So I'll ask that question later. Okay. So I love that you got into the science of how many galaxies and how long it takes to get from the beginning into the end, because it gives yeah. people more perspective of like, we are, the, the idea that we are alone is beyond ludicrous, like beyond is, ludicrous, it? like just stop yeah. it, stop it guys. <laughs> like, exactly. And then you have all these people who have had, you know, um, abduction exactly. stories. I mean, if, if there are a hundred billion planet that if, if there are, if astronomers think there are a hundred billion planets just in the Milky Way alone, I don't. I don't even think that we can count as high as how many planets there really are in the universe. Mm. I don't. What what comes after trillions? I mean, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, and so like when you were talking about this, um, I started my my first thought because I I like to think that I have a, a personal relationship with the Creator. You know, I like to think yeah. that. Who knows? I could be talking to myself all day long, but I like to think that. So it makes you wonder even more. It's like this being has to be either exceptional, exceptionally powerful, um, to to have a, a personal relationship with everything it's ever created because it's created so much, like so yeah. so 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 much. You know. Yep. Um, so if, if it really does and it can, if people say that that literally that uh, you know part of it is in us. And that just makes it even more spectacular. Like that, it can keep tabs on everything. It's just off the charts. Do you know? Um, do you know who Steve Harvey is? Yes, yes. <laughs> I um, I have one of his books, and he said something in there that blew my mind because he he's very much a believer in God. Yeah. And he was he was trying to tell people that if there are eight billion people on the planet, and mm -hmm. every single one of those people has an, a unique fingerprint. Who does that? That has to be God. Yes. How could that? How could that? How could every single person have their own fingerprint? Yeah, that's crazy. It's it's, it's off the charts. Yeah. Um, and it's the kind of thing you can meditate to, like when you really start to talk or think about God and in reality and even the mystery. Like if you're not a, if you're an atheist and you just start talking about science and you you talk about it long enough. You start moving towards the idea of of the creator, you know, without yep, realizing it. it. Yep. Um, and so that that brings me into my next question: Did you have a sense of the prime creator? Did you have a sense of like, oh yeah, duh, there is a god, I can feel it, or I know that it's there? Why are you I, on you the can, other side? I can actually, you can actually feel it. It's like a, it's a tangible feeling. You can actually feel the love that God has for all of us, wow. and it's it's the most. That's the part that I missed the most that was the hardest part about coming back here is we don't have that same feeling mm -hmm. it's the, it's the most extraordinary sense of absolute safety and peace and love and joy everything that you've ever experienced here on earth that's good you feel that all the time on the other side mm -hmm. you just it's just it's part of what you feel it, it's just the most remarkable thing Mm. Um, all right. So the biggest thing is here is how are we being recorded? Like, I just wanted to mention that, like, I know you don't have an answer to that, but my God, we need yeah, to think I, about I, um, <laughs> I have absolutely, I have no idea. I, I can't understand yeah. that. All yeah. I know is that it's God because mm. we don't have, I used to think this, is there some video recording that is somehow recording us in our daily lives, but there yeah. isn't. And the and thing I thought, it was so strange is when I was in that, when I was in that orientation or I mean, uh, um, the life review when looking at those mm -hmm. screens up at the top, mm -hmm. it was like watching a movie of my life. Yeah. And we, we all have that. And you just wonder how, who does that? How does that get yeah. recorded like that? And I, I thought for a moment, like, um, cause I, I think in like Islamic tradition, they believe that it's the, your guardian angels that record it. Like that you literally have recorders on both sides that are kind of, you know, oh, recording really? you. Yeah, so that's, that's the I only thing heard, I've, I never heard that. That's the only thing I've ever come across that make might make some sense. And then in the Christian um, idea um, ideology, there's the idea that the angels have eyes, like they're just all made of eyes. Like I don't know if you've heard of that. Oh, right. No, I've never so heard that before. Yeah. yeah. 
But um, wow. yeah, I, we, we pretty much went through all the questions. Um, my okay. thing is, okay, so how do people contact you? And if you want donations, sure. let me know how, how you know, if you want to receive sure. that. I, I, am, I am happy to talk to anybody. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. And here's my email. The best email to reach me is John J Davis 65 at iCloud.com. And I, I love sharing my story. I, I love talking about these things. So anybody who wants to reach out to me, please feel free to, and I'll definitely get back to them. Perfect. Perfect. And um, what, one last message for the world. <laughs> here's, here's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Don't ever feel like you're alone because you're not. I know that there are times where you feel like you're alone and you feel like you want to give up, but don't because the other side is rooting for you more than you can possibly imagine. And everybody has a reason for being here. Everybody has a mission. So give it your best, never give up because what you learn here is what you take with you and you have that for eternity. So never give up. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for your time, John. And thank you. It for was so your great energy. meeting you, Haji. It was, I had such a fun time talking to you. Thank you so much. God bless you so much. God bless you too. <laughs>